In this video, we'll explore the portal homepage, review user access management, and learn how to add new tiles to the landing page. Finally, we'll cover how to set tile preferences. Your portal homepage will look something like this. The major difference here from your public-facing departmental website is the lack of a slideshow. Each one of these tiles links to a section of your site, and you or your department determines who has permission to access these sections. Permission to view portal pages is managed as follows. Web Services grants access to pages within your portal groups on mCommunity. Your department manages your mCommunity groups. Each mCommunity group should be managed for a specific group's access to a specific section of your portal, for example, faculty. The top level, or home page, of your portal will be accessible to every mCommunity group. From there, access will narrow per your specifications. Please see this graphic demonstrating user access levels. Think of your top-level tiles like a funnel. Wide at the top, this is home page and top-level child pages, and narrowing towards the bottom. These are subsections of your site. You may grant access to all members of your department to view the contents of the site from general tiles on the home page with titles like resources or policies, etc. Those pages should be child pages of the home page and not nestled under a subpage with more limited access, such as faculty. You should establish who gets access to what as soon as you can during the portal planning process and discuss with your web design associate from Web Services about mCommunity group creation. Now let's get to work on those tiles. You have logged onto your website or portal in the authoring environment and now you want to add a tile or edit a tile or both. In the upper left corner of the page toolbar, there is an icon that resembles a computer screen. Click it to toggle the assets and components panels on and off. Depending on which tools you accessed last, you may either see a list of components or a list of assets. We want components, so we may need to select the icon with a plus in it, second from the top. Now that we can see our components menu, let's scroll down to find the tile, which is currently called LSA Tile, and is therefore under the letter L. Adding a component to a page is as simple as drag and drop. Click on LSA Tile and drag it to the position where you want it to appear. Arrows above and below the existing page content will indicate where the new component will be placed when you drop it. An arrow above a tile indicates your new tile will drop to the left of the existing tile. An arrow below a tile indicates your new tile will drop to the right of the existing tile. You can also rearrange tiles by dragging and dropping, and follow the above directive about the arrows to position them. When you're ready to place the component, drop it into position by releasing the mouse button. Now that we've seen how to add a new tile, let's find out what we can do with them. We'll give our new tile a destination link so that site visitors can click it and go to another page on the site. After you've added the tile to the page, you can toggle the component menu off again by clicking the screen looking icon. To edit a tile, first select the tile by clicking it. Then click the wrench symbol. A window will open and you'll see items such as tile settings tile type, and page options. We can give the tile a destination link in the page options section. In the field labeled path, click the search icon. It looks like a folder in a magnifying glass. A window with the text select path at the top will open. You may need to navigate through your site's folder structure to locate the destination page for the link you're adding to your tile. Click the arrow next to the word content, then LSA portals. Continue clicking arrows until you've navigated to the page on your site where you want the link in the tile to go. When you've located it, select the page by clicking its title and click the blue check mark in the upper right corner. This closes the select path window and adds your link path to the path field. Let's save and admire our work by clicking the check mark in the upper right corner. The new tile is now labeled as the name of the page we linked it to. We can test the link by switching from edit mode to preview mode in the upper right corner of our screen. The next thing we'll learn is how to change the color of a tile. Please ensure that you've switched back from preview mode into edit mode in the upper right corner of your screen. Select a tile and click the wrench, opening the tile settings panel. Scroll to the bottom and locate the theme color section. Use the drop-down menu to choose a color. I'll choose red so the new color really stands out. 
Save your changes and admire your work by clicking the check mark in the upper right corner of the settings panel. Next, let's change the text we see on the tile. Perhaps subpage is not descriptive enough. Did you know you can place almost any text you wish as a label for the tile? Select a tile and click the wrench, opening the tile settings panel. Choose the second tab in the top of the panel, the advanced tab. You will see two fields labeled title and text. Go ahead and type some text of your choice into these fields. Save your changes and admire your work by clicking the check mark in the upper right corner of the settings panel. Finally, you might want to spiff up the look of your landing page by adding images to your tiles to display pictures rather than colors. Select a tile and click the wrench, opening the tile settings panel. Choose the second tab in the top of the panel, the advanced tab. Under background, choose override with image from the dropdown. Under override image path, we now need to locate the image we want to use and this image should already be in our digital asset manager or the DAM. Click the search icon and open the Select Path window. You may need to navigate through your site's DAM folder structure to locate the correct photo. Click the arrows next to the folder labels to locate the appropriate asset folder, usually your site name-images. As of this video's creation, we can't see our images, only the file names. Changes will be applied later so that we can simply drag and drop images into the tiles, but currently we must do this the hard way. It will help you to know the file name of the image you want to use as the tile background. I'll select one of my assets and click the blue check mark in the upper right corner. This closes the Select Path window and adds your image path to the Override Image Path field. Save your changes and admire your work by clicking the check mark in the upper right corner of the settings panel.